Today I'm going to be talking about A28 film. Uh, people may be asking, well, what is A28 film? I've never heard of it, and quite frankly, I never heard of it either before I saw uh, the Kodak Pony 828 camera on eBay. <laughs> and uh, the Pony is a, a camera that was uh, developed in the late 40s, uh, early 1950s. And, of course, it was designed by Arthur Crapsey, who uh, designed many of the Bakelite cameras for mm -hmm. Kodak. Senor Crapsey. Exactly. A28 film. Uh, it was introduced in 1935, uh, only one year after 35 millimeter, and uh, it was uh, introduced for the Kodak Bantam camera, uh, which was a consumer camera. Now, the format is the basic film stock of 35 millimeter. I'm going to show it to you here. How old is that film that you have right uh, there? This film in my hand uh, is from 1975. Wow. Uh, and the film, 828 film, was uh, made only up until, it was made up until 1985 that they discontinued it. That's hard to believe, right? Uh, that it even lasted that long. Yeah. I've never heard of it in my life. Right. It's, it's shocking. So this is the same basic film stock as 35 millimeter, but the film la lacks sprockets. No sprockets? No sprockets. Look at, look at this old-timey film case. Look at that. Look at that. It's great. So A28 film is the same. It's a paperback. It's paperback. Look at that. And it's the same exact size as 35 millimeter, except the sprocket holes are, f f you know, s slotted differently. Huh. And it's paperback just like 120 film with your numbers on the back. Uh, however, 828 film, each roll yielded eight frames, which really isn't a lot. No. What was the dimension of, of the image that was uh, produced on it? You know what, Dwayne? I'm really glad you asked that. The 828 film produces a 30% larger image compared to 135 standard 24 really? by 36 millimeter. Yep. Yep. I wonder why this never really caught on. Yet on this, yet so, Yep. Because Kodak targeted 828 at a lower end consumer market, the film was much shorter and at the standard eight exposures per roll. It originally had one perforation per frame, much like 126 film. And uh, it's a roll film, as you can see, just like 120. Huh. 828 cameras never achieved widespread popularity, and the format had a rather limited run. It's shocking that it lasted until 85. I mean, if you, you know, I was into photography, of course, in the early 80s, and if you'd mentioned 828 to me, I'd never heard of it. Now, what you can do, and, and this is what I did, because I really wanted to use the Kodak Pony 828 camera, which is a lovely camera. Uh, you have uh, your shutter speeds. You have uh, B, uh, 25th of a second, 50th of a second, 100th of a second, or 200th of a second, and you can choose your f-stops from f4.5 up until f22. Uh, it has a Kodak Aniston lens, 51 millimeters, and uh, you can focus right here. You just guess the feet. It's very uh, tough looking camera. It is, right? It's tough I mean, it looks like an army camera. Yeah, it, it, it really does. Like you could drop that sucker in a puddle and it'll still work. Now, I really wanted to, um, here's a little, the box that it came with, very interesting. Oh box, the Kodak yellow box. El Caballo Ocho Dos Ocho. Yes. Now, I wanted to shoot with this camera, so believe it or not, you can find Co you can find Kodak and other brands of 828 film on the ebay.com, and many of them are so amazingly ex expired that you may not want to shoot with it, and in this case, it's the old Kodachrome, Kodachrome 2, mm. which wasn't even the K14, it was a different K processing. And what you can do is you, you, what you want to get is the spool and the backing paper. And then in a dark room or in a film changing bag, you can very easily take, ideally, a 12 exposure roll of Kodak or any other brand film. And because the 12 exposure is the same length as what's on this uh, paper, you don't have to do any excess cutting or figure out not, you know, how long is it going to be. You can basically take a 12 exposure roll of film, ASA of your choice, and then in the dark room, just take the old film out, and uh, this is the head. And the film is always taped at the head, by the way. And at the end of the film, it always just dangles. Not taped. Not taped. 
And this film is so old that you can see the curl of it yeah. is uh, rather intense. So, but, uh, you know, the zen of the uh, film changing bag or the zen of the dark room, because a lot of folks, myself included, at first, you can get a little perplexed in a film changing bag because you can panic. I mean, you can easily panic or, you know, uh, have to itch your nose. Yeah, no, absolutely. Have to itch your nose. Every itch you ever had will happen when your hand's in a bag. Absolutely. But the <coughs> best thing that I always do, because I tend to have to itch my nose or get a little panicky, is uh, take a deep breath. I'm not kidding. Take a deep breath and just kind of relax. Now, when you roll your film back, sometimes you run into some problems. Like right now, I'm rolling to the head of my roll of the buckling. See that? No problem. No problem. You would just take the tape off and then just smooth it out and then retape it down so that it rolls back on the roll nice and easy. Will that tape restick? Well, you'll be putting a new roll. Oh. So, as a matter of fact, I'll show you right here. You just un undo the tape. Amazingly, this roll of film, manu manufactured probably sometime in 1974, the tape is still good. Look at that. So now I'm taking the tape off and now I can smooth out my roll so that there's no buckle. There it is. And then roll it back on. Um, now, for the purposes of today's show, I uh, preloaded a roll of film in a 35 millimeter little can. I kept it in my refrigerator. And uh, I rolled a roll of Kodak uh, Max 400 film, which is uh, it's expired. Uh, I bought it from an eBay seller. Uh, there are a massive amount of 35 millimeter film, by the way, on eBay that is expired. A lot of closeouts, like you know, like companies like Rite Aid, CVS, major uh, drug stores, they bought so much film that it stockpiles, and then it winds up in what's called odd lots. Mm -hmm. So I bought a big box of uh, Kodak Max 400. So now, really quick, I'm going to load the uh, Kodak. Pony 828 camera, which right now is my favorite camera right, uh, as of this moment right now. <laughs> the Kodaks, you just a little switch on the side. That pop opens the back door, which comes right off. Check it out. Huh. Look at that, huh? huh? And then you would put your film in on the take-up side, which goes right here. The best thing to, to know when doing stuff like this, when you're kind of unfamiliar w w with what's going on, is to not lose your cool. You can't lose your cool with this kind of stuff. You gotta just like be patient and kind of like make sure you're in a very patient kind of zen kind of mood before you get involved with this old timey kind of stuff. Because you don't want to be. Yeah, what you just did. You couldn't get it in, so you just calmly took it yeah, out. I didn't panic. Start all over again, Thank man. Thank you, John. So I'm gonna put it in. It just slips right in. Chill out. There it is. It's in. Now it's I fine. pull it over. Good vibes. Put the uh, the take up in. Oh, the yeah. uh, spool. Smooth. Right here. Yeah. I don't know if you can the see. The way of the film, Mike. You Use the film. way. Thank you, guys. And then you start rolling it. Roll. Roll another one. Roll your own, Mike. Roll now your own. They see it's. Oh, it's working. Ooh. Amazing. Because ah. you are a one with the camera okay. and the film. Oh, squeak away, my friend. <laughs> <laughs> now I'm trying to get it so that it's, it's kind of tight. Yeah, it's kind of bulging there. Oh, look at that. It, look at you. You it did it. It didn't, didn't do it. See, now I thought that I did it. Nope. Nope. Didn't go. Didn't so, go. Didn't go. Don't, don't lose it. Start again. So I just start again. Just back it up. Come oh, on. Here we go again. Now what you could do. <laughs> this <laughs> camera. Okay. This freaking I camera. Know. What you could do. It's the fifth time in a row. Ladies and gentlemen, is take a really small piece of tape. And just tape it to and the this uh, applies take to up reel. Any roll of film. Spool. Yeah, you can just take a really... This is paper tape. It's known as paper tape. Piper tape. This happens to be green. Green paper tape. Yep. Green paper Kinda tape. Kind of just... If you can see... Just tape that... Yeah, just just take the tape and... Got to move those uh, gorilla fingers. Eh? I know, I know. I got to move the gorilla fingers. Kind of just tape it to the spool. There you go. It's on the spool. And that's going to make it a little bit easier. See, now that now we're that's cooking. It. Now that's you it. Got it. See, the pressure of the camera will keep the, that The in. pressure. Yes. <laughs> so now I'm going to put the door back on the camera. Put the camera back together. Put the camera back together. So 
this little button here on the side. And now I could roll. Here's, uh, believe it or not, this is the first time I've seen a little green window. Glenn. Yeah. I've always seen red windows. This camera will self destruct <laughs> in 10 seconds. Well, the film, the backing was green. Yes. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to roll my film until I get to n number one. I'm at number one. <gasps> number one. Exciting. And this camera, you, uh, you set the shutter manually here. You just uh, pull this thing down here. You watch this. Shutter is now set. I'm at 50th of a second. I'll take a picture of John and Dwayne with our twins. Look this way, gentlemen. That's good, John. One, two, three. Now, another thing uh, I need to note about older cameras, you know, camera like this, 1950, is sometimes they you smell. Well, you could get a, a camera that has a musty smell, yeah. but m but the biggest problem is what's known as a sticky shutter, Dwayne. Mm. Yes. A little I've, alcohol. I brought. Well, no, I don't. I'm Rubbing not good alcohol. at repairing. You can get some oil mm. on your shutter. Mm. You really. I don't. Me personally, I don't know what to do except cry. <laughs> Come on. Now this shutter, I don't know if it is accurate fiftieth of a second. It seems kind of slow to me. The thing with that is. Something that's that old is it's got so much lubricant crud that's been since dried out on it that it's probably uh, interfering with the mechanisms moving smoothly. And for you to get that, first of all, you got to find someone who's going to clean it. Who knows how? They probably can't. And even if you did, it would be so costly. Yeah, it's like kind of jitter. It's like, you know, it's it's um, it's, it's worth, jumping. It's it would cost really more to repair snapping. that shutter than it would be to get yes. a new camera. Now I'm currently testing this, the Pony 828 camera with uh, the re-rolled 828 film. Uh, if you're really into film photography and like old-timey cameras, it's really a lot of fun to kind of take these out for a spin. And sometimes you're, you'll be amazingly surprised at the amazing pictures that some of these older lenses deliver. Sometimes they're crystal sharp. Sometimes they're kind of a little dreamy-like because sometimes a mold mm. uh, forms on the inside of the lens so it actually softens your image. So it's sort of like... Uh, it's one of a kind. Yeah, it's one of a kind. You're, you're, you're experimenting and going to get a one of a kind image, which is sort of the whole lamography thing of you know, going out there and shooting from the hip and you don't know what you're going to get. But I always find this to be more fun because you're shooting with a piece of history and uh, you're resuscitating something that was uh, kind of on its way to a garbage bin. In other words, we're recycling here as well. You're saving this... Mm from being put into a landfill. And um, you can own actually a piece of uh, history as far as the way the camera looks, feels, and shoots. And uh, that's my segment on the Kodak Pony 828 camera. <laughs>